Don't try to sneak into your room like that. I know what you've got behind your back. Records. More no records. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Now I hear you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. What go. happened? <laughs> you know, I, I don't do this often. Every time I do this, I have to learn it all over again. So, okay. <laughs> so, Peter, it's it's great to talk to you again. You know, the last time I talked to you was 49 years ago. Do you know that? Really? Oh, yeah. my goodness. I was on WBCN. And uh, oh. one night I was playing your records. And I was telling people that uh, in a couple of years, this guy's going to be a big star. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. And you were in town and you called up the station and came up to the station. And it was like, it was, it was a great uh, evening of playing records and hanging out. I don't know whether you remember that. Or oh, not. that's amazing. I love that. I'm yeah. a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> but, but let me tell you, you got me in a lot of trouble because the next weekend... Oh. Someone called up the station. This is the top of the Prudential Center, so it was a big, you know, it was a big place. Someone called up saying they were Yoko Ono. So, oh no! <laughs> yeah. So okay. So I I uh, said to Yoko, I said, go to the security guard downstairs at the Pru and have them let you in. You know. So so she did, and the security guard called up and she, and he said, I got a Yoko Ono here for you. I said, let me ask you a question. Is she Asian? And he said, well, with a name like that, she must be. <laughs> Okay, okay. Send, her <laughs> Send her up. Anyway, she came up. It was, you know, Yoko Ono with quotes around it. It was a lot of fun, but she was crazy. The next day she came back to the station and she tried to stab somebody. So I got in trouble for that. Okay, let's get... This wasn't, obviously wasn't Yoko Ono. No, no. It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but you were Peter Frampton and that was the good thing. I, At the time I was Peter Frampton, yes. And you still are. And you still are. So... <laughs> I just want to go back a little bit uh, to show you a couple of records and get your uh, your impression of of this record here. Yes, it, that was a uh, that was an album that was released as kind of a best of. I think um, it was the original album was that was probably an American. No, no, it's yes. Fontana. That that's yeah, a, but this that was an American a, a, Fontana division of uh, Mercury. So oh, okay, all right, we were on Fontana in England, so. Right. Um, but I believe that was the version of um, Paradise Lost. Okay, and, and you're album. right. So that's me, yeah. yeah. And um, heavily sprayed down, the hair is there. So what was this period of time like for you? You, you were still very young uh, and just getting started here? Yes. Um, it was all very exciting for me because it all happened so quickly as soon as I, it seemed like as soon as I got asked to play with the band just for the summer uh, holidays, summer vacation from school, um, <clears throat> we got nearer and nearer to the time when um, I was going to have to go back to school and do my A-levels. I got my GCE O-levels and, um, and the band came to me and said, Will, will you not go back to school and will you join the band? So I said, oh dear, my dad's a teacher and my mom works at a school. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, but anyway, uh, I spoke to them both. My dad's top lip kind of went up like this and, and my mother winked at me and he, she said, leave it with me. So uh, she talked him into it and wow. I got to join. But to, to be within a year uh, of being in the herd when I was 16, 17 is when all this happened. 17, yeah. 18. Now in this picture, <laughs> you have kind of a like, uh, you're like, what's happening here? <laughs> what's happening to me? <laughs> I don't know that, I don't know what we're wearing, you know, but I, I you know, it was uh, a mixture of Carnaby Street and um, herd outfits. I don't know. <laughs> and of course uh, they credit this gentleman is being Andy Brown for some. Oh, no. yeah. yeah, I just I just spoke to him. It was his birthday a couple of days ago, and I just spoke to Andrew. And um, yeah, he's doing great. He's doing great with the quo. And he's playing with the quo. Yeah, and then of course there's you were involved on this record too, right? You played yes, I was. Yeah, I um, Andy uh, Andy made great records uh, yeah. on his album, and. Um, Andrew, sorry. He was Andy back then. Now he's Andrew. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I loved, well, we, oh, I remember that, that yeah. time period. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, we we uh, Andy kind of showed me the ropes. Uh huh. He, he was my best friend in the band, and um, as uh, quirky as he was, he was incredibly and still is very uh, creative and uh, a little different um, in his outlook on things. And and I I enjoyed that. We we had a great partnership while I was in the band. And it's great that you can remain friends and still uh, stay in touch with all these people that you played with. Uh, yeah, I force myself on it, people. So it's <laughs> we're not going to lose touch, I tell you. Yes. Now, okay, here's a question I have for you. I want to talk about uh, Andrew Lou Oldham, Oldham and, and these two records here. Yeah. So it came out in America this way as a two. Oh, I know. Yeah. And they said that uh, Town and Country came first and this came second. That's backwards, yeah. correct? That's backwards, yes. Okay, that's what I always thought. Yeah, so, because the, the, as safe as yesterday is, as soon as we were rehearsed um, this, and we'd, we'd learned the songs that were going to be on here on As Safe As Yesterday is, we were bing, we were in the studio with Andy Johns, engineering and um, producing with us. And um, that thing was done pretty much um, as soon as we formed. This is, a, I love this. I bought this record when it came out. I play this record all the time. I absolutely love this record. Do you still play these records? Or you, you... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just, I moved uh, um, to a new place recently and I just got my turntable hooked up again in my music room. And I'm so enjoying the vinyl. I mean, it's, you know, I don't often sit down and listen to myself. <laughs> um, I, I once you finish a project, it's like when an artist finishes a painting. It's it's somebody else's, even though it's your baby. It's yeah. now somebody else's. So, um, but I, the the trouble with me is if when I listen to stuff that I I've already done in the past, I always try and I wish I could just do that one bit again there you know <laughs> well, of course that's i think everybody has that i know i know but this is a wonderful record and you know you and you do a john k song on here which is interesting mm -hmm. choice yeah john k said when he first we we played with uh either we played with step we opened for step and when we first came to america or he came to the show wherever it was and we were like Do you know john k's here you know we were nobody over there you know i said you're kidding me and he said, yeah. And he said, okay, boys, you know, because German. And he, I, I have to know which one of you sang the very high note. <laughs> I said, that was me. <laughs> well, old Peter, I opened for him at uh, at Max's Kansas City doing stand-up oh, yeah. comedy. And he didn't show up. Oh, <laughs> I had to do both sets, the same set twice. <laughs> oh, well, you know, <laughs> right. I, I, yeah, I didn't know that about him. <laughs> so what was what was it like uh working with Steve Marriott? What what was that what was your relationship with him like? <clears throat> well, um different levels really. Um uh, first of all, um a, a mutual ad admiration for each other's talent and um uh, originally we when we first met it was <clears throat> Steve Steve uh, Marriott and Ronnie Lane invited Andrew Bound and myself down to their cottage um, in Marlow and uh, down the M4. And um, they said, look, we've heard that you've got some financial problems with management, whatever. Can we give you some advice? You know, and she, because they said, we've been through it a couple of times already. So, so we said, oh yeah, that will be great. And I, ever since I had saw, ever since I had seen, um, uh, small faces do their very first single what you're going to do about it on ready steady go live no lip sync uh everything was live and um by the time <clears throat> he opened his mouth to sing i was like oh oh i really i would love to be in this band i'd love to play with him you know so from the very first time i heard his voice I thought that's the kind of I want to. I don't want to be a singer. I just want to play behind that guy, you know. And um, so by the time he got to the guitar solo, I was like, "Oh my god!" It was that big <laughs> feedback solo he did? And um, so anyway, <clears throat> when we got the call from Ronnie Lane, 
uh, to come down and meet Steve and him, it was it was a major moment for me because uh, I was a huge, huge Small Faces fan. So, yeah. but we we got along great. I mean, there were certain. I mean, I was what uh, 18, 19, and I think I was still coming into my own at that point. And then by the time I turned twenty, um, I wanted to do my own thing. So, uh, you know, it was very sad. Um, the guys were very upset, but. Um, I had to leave. I just wanted to go. I was ready to take on the world, you know, myself. Just like he left uh, the band he was with, also Small Faces. He just walked yes. out, apparently, yeah. on, on stage. You didn't do that, though, right? No, 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 no. That was good no. of you. No, but we, we had just been... Um, we were both in uh, Paris recording um, Johnny Halliday, the, the French Elvis. Sure. Rest, in, rest in peace. What a lovely man. Um, such a nice man. And, uh, <clears throat> and, um, he had invited the small, he loved the small faces too. So he invited them over to record with Glenn Johns being the producer and engineer, uh, not, not too shabby. Not and, too um, shabby. <laughs> and then, uh, Steve, either Steve or, or Glenn called me up and said, look, he wants another guitarist. Um, you know, someone like Jimmy Page or Jeff Beck or, or Eric Clapton is they're all busy. Can you come? <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, I, I'm not sure he said it quite like that, but, no, well, but that's, anyway, telling, uh, that's telling you short as far as I'm concerned. You no, know, no, no, I was I was uh, amazed to be in the same sentence. But anyway, um <clears throat> so we went over there and I got my dream. For a week I played with the small faces in the studio. Oh so wow, that was cool. I joined the band. We're on about five cuts, I think, on that album. <clears throat> and um, one of them, bang, he did first. And then we did it on As Safe As Yesterday Is. Right. But that's, that's how um, that's how I got to really get to know Steve on during that. And then he came, we all came back from Paris um, and he called me the night um, after. And that's when he said, hey, Pete, because uh, he was helping me put a band together. He'd found me Jerry, Jerry Shirley for drums. Right. And, and he was helping me put a band together because I'd left the herd. And uh, so basically he said, um, look, Pete, I've, I've had it. I've left the small faces. And can I join your band? And I said, are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> um, because I think what he wanted, it's the elephant in the room at this point. He wanted me to join the small faces. He wanted, I, I took some relief gave him some relief, you know? Yeah. And um, even though he was a great front man, he hated being a front man, which is very strange, I know, but it happens a lot. Um, and uh, so anyway, um, that was it. I mean, I said, and then Ronnie Lane called me the same evening and said, look, Steve's left the band. Will you join a small face? I said, no, I said, we could have all been in the same band, you know. So that would have been a whole different boy. That would have been a different career for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I said, the, the sh those shoes are too big for me to fill. I said, I'm sorry. I know, I know what I can do, and I can't do that. Yeah. Um, you know. And it took two people to replace him. You know, Ronnie, Ronnie Wood, and Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart, yeah. Well, it took two. And then this one, you went for a totally uh, kind of like a very acoustic almost like an unplugged yes. thing yes that's my apartment oh i see <laughs> in hampstead cool. hampstead heath ah you know i've been there all right so so let's get uh, more up to date so then you uh immediate crashed in flames and andrew lugaltum's company went bankrupt mm -hmm. and um you'd been signed to a and m at that point with uh humble pie right uh, after after yeah andrew did a phenomenal thing <clears throat> for us he let us he knew he was going chapter 11 and he we were an asset but he let us out of our contract yeah so we could go to uh a&m except he said the only thing i can't do is i can't let you have your publishing because that is an asset yeah um so it took us a long time to get that back but it, we did in the end. Yeah. But yes, we went to A and M. And yet, this these rec these two great records couldn't come out 
right away because of legal issues, which is too bad. But well, I and, didn't I didn't know that. Yeah. So now you were with A and M, but was it A and M America or is it a separate A and M in the UK or both? Did you? I mean, did you move with uh, <clears throat> Herb was, Albert and Jerry was, Moss uh, or, or what? Yeah, it was um, <clears throat> um, the president of the English office of A and M was Larry Yaskill, and he we had <clears throat> Andrew Oldham had given us a lesson on how to do a record deal. So Steve and I went round, we saw Warner Brothers, Atlantic. Um, I'm not sure if we saw Ireland. Um, and the last one was A&M, you know. Uh, Ahmet and Jerry Greenberg uh, met with Steve and I, and they really thought we were signed by the time they left. Oh. But then we had one more meeting and it was with Larry. And so during the meeting, <clears throat> We we had a specific amount that we were that Andrew said ask for this amount, <clears throat> and um, so this time we'd done this like four times already, four different meetings. So when they said what would you be looking for, Larry said that Steve added a hundred thousand on, and I I didn't I didn't look at him. I just gulped. I just went <laughs> like this, and and he said, uh, let me see, <clears throat> let me go call Jerry. Jerry Moss, yeah. and uh, let's see what we can do. And as soon as Larry left the room, I said, Steve! <laughs> <laughs> and Steve was just laughing. He said, well, he said, yes. All you got to do is ask. All he could right. say is no. You know, so, That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's so so we were the biggest signing of, of A&M Records at that time, I think. It was a very, very lucrative deal for us Good. at a very well, young age. And, and so... Then, eventually, yes. you did this wonderful record here, which I think these two records, there's a lot of a breakup in your life. Uh, was there a lot of marriage breakup? And you, you, I mean, there's songs on this record about that kind of thing. Um, that, that well, Frampton's Camel's more the one, the second yeah. one yeah. is, is yeah. more about, you know, lines on my face and right. all the songs are about losing a love, basically. Right. This one um, was basically written um, in a better, you know, before that. Yeah. So I would say no. I would say this is more um, uh, a inner relationship. This one. Yeah. Wonderful record. Of course, uh, my ex girlfriend worked for AM Records and she dumped me and I played these records all the time because it just made the whole connection. Right. <laughs> I don't know this story. I'm sorry mm -hmm. I said that. <laughs> so, but I notice that in all of these records, you not just didn't just play on them, but you had the best producers, you had the best engineers, you cared about all these aspects of it, which is not true for every musician. So how, how did that come about? Um, well, <clears throat> having been <clears throat> in the studio since I was 14, and the first engineer that I worked with was Glenn Jones. <laughs> That's because of Bill Wyman. <clears throat> and um, being with this band, The Preachers, as a semi-pro band before The Herd. And um, I have always been very techie. Um, before any of any, I was in the herd or anything, I had already got not one, but two reel to reel, cheap reel to reel tape machines. Yeah. And I was going sound on sound. I was going backwards and forwards. The quality, by the time you, you finished about four times, the hiss was so loud, you could hardly hear the music, but I did it. I did multi-tracking yeah. by sound on sound when I was about 12. You could always say you were recording at the ocean, you know. It was, exactly. It was... And then and I I took the speaker off the wall in the kitchen that was an extension speaker for the radio uh, so we could hear it while we were having lunch from the living room. I took it off the wall and um put it in the um put it in the bathroom of our family home and put a little one of those little tiny crystal mics from the tape recorder in the end of the bath and I sent my guitar signal through in through the bathroom and I made my own echo chamber that was your echo chamber yeah that's great and I when I finally met Les Paul uh, I, I told him I said you know I use my parents bathroom 
as my live chamber. He said, oh, I used to stick Mary in the bathroom all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that has a very lewd connotation. But anyway, that's all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, all right, so then, so then if, this is more of a solo record and then you put the group together. Yes. For this. And this so, is where I drove down uh, to the, uh, to Rhode Island, the University of Providence, I think, with John Perellis from the New York Times to come see you because we knew something was happening. So we drove down to see you. And this was oh, a wow. wonderful record too. Oh yeah, that's the, in fact, <clears throat> that record, I mixed that myself. Oh. Uh, it was recorded by Eddie Kramer in New wow. York at uh, Electric Lady. Um, and then I took it home. We started mixing it, but it, it wasn't, I wasn't ready to mix it at that point. And so I think there's only one that Eddie and I mix. White Sugar is our mix. The rest I took back to England, back to my my home studio, Olympic, oh. and I I got uh, this wonderful assistant engineer who'd worked Doug, who'd work, worked on uh, stuff with me and Chris Kimsey on on Wind of Change, and we went to what well, it was called the Reduction Room, the mix room in those oh, days. Good That's name. How English it was, you know, the reduction room. Well, you reduce things. Your English accent's really good. How'd you learn that? Oh, you're from <laughs> And um, so anyway, uh, it took me like, I don't know, 10 days, was a track a day. Um, and I really enjoyed, that's when I, I, I cut my teeth on really putting my engineering uh, experience, uh, semi-pro into yeah. a professional arena. You know, and I, I'm, I, it's funny because we're re-releasing that. Um, when yes. change, um, we'll talk about that in a second. Okay. <laughs> you mentioned records are sitting there going, when are you going to get to the box set? When are you going to get to the box set? <laughs> and then, then there was this record, which is, yes. this, this was the one that really, I think this broke you as a, as an yes. artist, as opposed to the live album, which I mean, took things where, where when you sang, uh, I can't believe this is happening to me. I can imagine that that lyric had many meanings <laughs> more than just having a love affair, right? I know, I know, I know. It was, uh, yeah, that it, it, I, it made me sound prophetic. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever expect that kind of success or the way that happened? No, there's something's happening was about my life and my relationships, you know. Yeah. So no, but it, but it, in a different. Um, with a different, if you look at it from a different aspect, it looks like I was prophetic. So yeah, well, I, I had a Pilates class this morning. It's all women in there, you know. I told them I was interviewing you, and they there was the old women. They're squealing like they were like they were twelve. Years. <laughs> 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 they don't do that when I walk in the room. Believe me. All right, so so let's get to the box set now. So these records are wonderful records, but it, they sort of fell into a donut hole of sales. They did not really do what you would hope they would do as good as they are and that's a very frustrating thing for right. you more than for me but it was for me it was frustrating and so now there's a chance to get them out there again to reach a, a larger audience in this box set how did the box set come about uh shane just um reached out to to me through lisa jenkins my manager and ken levitan um and asked he said i you know i think i can get permission to um <clears throat> uh to t to uh rent these from uh from um from uh, UME must be. now yeah, yeah um and would you be interested in and I said oh my goodness yes you mean on you know re remaster it for vinyl and everything and he said yes yes so I said oh my goodness I I think it's a phenomenal idea you know it's, it's great cool. it's gonna be great and I'm gonna I'll do what I did when I uh pushed you on the radio in 74 i'll push it again and i've got a pretty good following and and we'll, we'll good yeah, thank I you i can't wait to hear how, the, how these come out yeah so it's great i think it'll reach a whole nother audience and uh reach the older audience as well and uh have you heard test pressings yet have you yes i have and i've a beat them and um they, they sound they're a, a little so one of them's a little louder when you know, it's they're a little different, but it's it's so cool to to hear them uh, virtually exactly the same. Maybe a little bit of extra something because of technology today. Yeah, it's gotten but better. Nothing yeah. was nothing was done 
um, uh, that wasn't done back then. It was done exactly the same way, except the equipment is possibly better right I, now. I we is. don't know. Yeah. Yeah. The, the lathe is up the same. Yeah. Yeah, the lathe, but the lathe's been updated, and of course the playback gear. I don't know what your playback gear consists of, but you know, next time I'm down there, if you want me to set up your turntable, that's my specialty. That's what I do all over the world. Okay, so I'd love to do that for you. Anyway, so oh, this is wow. out in a couple of weeks, I guess, or uh, they're they're pressing yes. it now. And uh, are you going to do anything to support this release, or just do Zoom calls like this? Are you going to go out on mm -hmm. the road promoting your record again? I don't. When when is this when is this going to air? That you, you'll have to edit this out. So yeah, well, I when think, is it I think it can run just the way it is. Uh, I think it's great. I'm enjoying myself. I th hope you're enjoying yourself. Oh, okay, yeah. but I I can tell you something if I find out when it's going to be released. This All this right. what we're doing now. All right. Would you rather see this? We're negotiating here. Would you rather see this come out uh, when the record is available, when the rec when the box is available, or to prepare for the box? What do you think? And I'll talk to Shane I think about this. You know. Yeah, I, I think we can. Uh, uh, yeah, it's very difficult because um, we have an announcement coming out, but it's not out yet. Right. Um, so maybe we so, should wait for that. Yes, I think so. wait for the announcement, then you'll know what I mean. And can we show this in, in the video that are negotiating here for when this is going to come out? Uh, yeah, I, ha I don't know exactly. It's in the next couple of days. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Good. That's good. Well, it was great catching up with you again, uh, Peter. And I, let's not wait 49 years again. To, no. <laughs> I don't think we have 49 years. No, no. I don't think I got that many. Yeah. Me either, me either. <laughs> but it was great. Anything else you want to tell uh, the audience? Um, <clears throat> no, There's uh, all I can say is that this is, for me, um, even though I, I have a, a muscle disorder, which is depleting my muscles and will affect and is affecting my playing. Mm. Um, <clears throat> uh, this is the best time of my life. Um, I'm enjoying not not doing quite so much on the road. Um, and um, that's been a thrill. And I have a granddaughter who lives around the corner from me now. Oh, in, well, that's wonderful. And so my life is, and all my kids come to visit me. And so, it's it's a time you know <clears throat> for me when there were so many years I felt guilty that I wasn't around my kids you know but that's you know if you're an emergency room doctor or what whatever that takes you away at the moment's notice you know there's that's what I had to do that was my job you know yeah and um, so I now feel that instead of touring my band I, I tour the tour the family. <laughs> yeah. And you made a wonderful blues record a couple of years ago. That was fun. Thank you. Yeah. Which I should have pulled out and shown also, as long as we're showing That's records. All right. And uh, and I'm, I've got, I've been working on since um, the last album, which is um, Frampton Forgets the Words, which was an instrumental record, second instrumental record. Um, since we did that, I have been, and I'm still writing um, an all uh, self penned new material record so oh, I, I i'm not sure how old i'll be when that comes out but it's not coming out right not very soon it'll be um it'll be a while because i i want it to be the best record i've ever made i mean everyone says that well I, this is the best one i've ever done you know <laughs> this latest one you know but um i want to make sure it is you so know, you're so. not going to do what you two did and come out with a reimagined that that was not a great idea for them to do that just re, taking all these old songs and redoing them now it wasn't a great idea you it, know it, you know, you know i've written a new song called i still can't remember what i came upstairs for it's not <laughs> he didn't do that I didn't. No. <laughs> oh i that that's a song i could write I yeah <laughs> Or I don't know what what the hell I came down to the kitchen for. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what Joni Mitchell has when uh, help me, I'm falling and I can't get up. Okay, but that's not enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Michael, great, great speaking with you. Same here, Peter. And thank you so much. And I, I'm sure this record is going to reach a lot of people who should have been there the first time. And it'll reach a lot of young people who should definitely hear it because it's wonderful music and i'm very happy for you and i hope i'll run into you sometime in the future so thank you so much
You're welcome. And, and all the money goes to um, Peter Frampton um, IBM fund, myositis fund. So for at uh, Johns Hopkins. So it, I'm not going to see any of the money from this at all. It's all going to the fund. That's good. And and I, and I hope that you, are, you, you do well and feel well and everything. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot, Peter. Thank you. Thanks, Michael.